Uh, so let's uh, just kind of take a look at where we're at. And uh, there's a bunch of lectures that are up. So if you come here and you click on lectures to watch in Blackboard, I'm putting these videos together. And I uh, just uploaded some more, 29, 30, 31, 32. I actually have quite a few covered. And here's the video index. And so let me uh, get a link to this. Copy link and resources. I think I might have it. These notes. So that's a shorter one. Copy link, URL. And then here in Blackboard, I'll put uh, an item, an image, a web link. Course outline. URL. This link is a tool provider. Uh, and I think that's all I need to add. Open in a new window, yes. Submit. So now on Blackboard, you can click on that and it'll take you to this outline. And uh, let's just cruise through this outline for a second. And uh, should you even learn web dev, websites versus apps? And these are all videos that you can watch how to succeed, getting code using this course, uh, workflow preview, and then configuring your environment. So different editors and a terminal overview and terminal essentials and terminal emulator on Windows. Let me just say that you can't do everything on Windows with a terminal emulator, which you can do on Mac. Like if you try to run Nano on Windows, it's not going to run. Uh, but you can do a lot of the stuff. So uh, then the GitHub stuff. And then we have an introduction to HTML and history of the Internet and the World Wide Web. And then the holy uh, trinity of web programming, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML is for what? <laughs> Structure. CSS is for what? Styles. Styles and JavaScript your functionality. And then we look at uh, HTML tags and attributes. So a tag has attributes. You could call it a tag or an element. There's like, you know, the paragraph element, but then when you put it in, inside brackets, it's a tag. So I always just say tags because that's the way I think of them, but a lot of times they're referred to as elements. So we have HTML tags and attributes, and then attributes are the different settings that we could uh, have on a tag. And so let's just look at you know an example of some attributes. And uh, I really recommend working in WebStorm. Like uh, I just think it's superior, and it's my favorite, and I know how to debug in it. So or you know do things in it. So when you get stuck, I could come help you out. And as you're going through Code Academy, if you haven't finished that up, and you get stuck, take your code from Code Academy, paste it into WebStorm, and it'll help you sort of troubleshoot what's going wrong. But uh, so I have this entire repo here with all these code samples, right, that I've been putting together. So here's tags and attributes. And so this illustrates a tag, but there's no attribute in that. So that's kind of funny tags and attributes. Let me add an attribute to something. Uh, image. So here's an image and it has the attribute source and that's set to some setting, right? So an attribute is set to some value. So that's an example of tag with attributes, source attribute and alt attribute. And so that's uh, tags and attributes. And then we look at an anatomy of an HTML page and uh, some essential tags in HTML. And then we do some build a web page and talk about relative versus absolute URLs and Emmet IO and a hands on exercise. And then a bit of review. And then we jump into some CSS and uh, an overview of CSS and some resources and connecting CSS to HTML, the different ways you could do that. And CSS resets and CSS selectors and Google fonts and the box model and border radius. And then an example from Mozilla's website and uh, some ex an exercise for you. And uh, so that's uh, the next part. And then the next thing we'll learn after that is uh, structuring our documents and content sectioning. And that's about where I'm at in recording the lectures. So I pretty much have all the HTML and CSS stuff done. I'm still editing a few and then I'll put those up. But the primary thing you should be focusing upon in your efforts in this class are watching these lectures and making sure you watch them and understand them. 
and, uh, and then doing assignments. To that end, on Thursday, bring in earbuds, right? So if you need to watch a lecture, you can watch that lecture while you're in here working on Thursday. So it's a little bit of a different class because I'm not lecturing to you about all that stuff in class. I'm lecturing to you about all that stuff outside of class. You could come in here and watch some of it if you want, if that's what you're working on. But the main thing is when we're in class, you have me, you have Rio as a resource, let's work together. And then I'll always just kind of give you a little bit, because it's fun to also talk about code and do examples. So as things come up, I'll just stop everybody and, hey, check this out. This is good to see, you know, or point something out. And then for the assignments, you should, uh, you know, we had week one already. But uh, you should finish Code Academy HTML, CSS. So if you haven't got that done, try to get that done by Thursday. And that sh was week one. And you should, should have done the GitHub stuff and, uh, you know, created a basic repo. And then create this web page right here. And if you look at this and you think, whoa, right, how am I going to create that? By the time you get through the CSS videos, that you'll know how to do this. You'll know how to create that page. So I changed it from the first example, which was just a paragraph and some headings. And if you submitted for that, that's fine, right? And I kind of wish that I built this where that was the first one and the next one is this one, but I don't know. Uh, Rio, <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I have a little bit of hard time like <laughs> with structure. Like I'm trying my hardest to keep it all, and I feel like my outline is great, but connecting that with the assignments isn't working 100% for me yet. So let's just say you have this done by next Tuesday, which means that next Tuesday, maybe I'll make this one then uh, your week two. I'll edit this. I'm gonna edit this, and let's just keep it on track. And we'll have this due by week two. I think week one, kind of getting up and running, getting GitHub going, going through Code Academy, that's good. And then week two will be this page here. Okay? And I, in the grade book, I think I need to, we'll need to change that in here, change the name of it, make sure that that's named correctly. Maybe it did it automatically. Uh, let's go to Manage, Column Organization. And we could scroll down, and we have week two, create this page. Cool, it updated it automatically. And I have a syllabus up there for us now, and 100% of your grade will be based upon your syllabus, on your assignments. So where's the syllabus? No, that's not true. 80% uh, uh, of your grade's assignments, 20% is just showing up to class, coming in here. All right. Yeah. Do we need to provide you with the 3 by 5 index card? Oh, where do I put that? No. Come to class. Come to class and participate to earn these points. There we go. But just remind me to take roll. So uh, two options for you. You got your computer in front of you. You could just go ahead and work. And then the second one is I could just sort of start stepping through what I've done in all of these lectures right here. And, uh, and I, I could just sort of in, in here, just you and I, and you could ask questions. Uh, I, could, you, you know, I could start pointing out all the different little things here. And so we could probably walk through all this code in an hour. And then you have all those lectures as, as backup. And so some people like that. So for people who want to work, just go ahead and work. And is there anybody who would like me to just sort of step through and point things out and have a conversation about this stuff while we're in here? Yeah, man, if you know Vim, fine. Like, uh, is there any other uh, program or student tech better that you may know that you can use within Vim? Nano. Have you used Nano? Yeah, or, or when you're creating gitignore, so the question is, is how do I create a gitignore? You could use a text editor straight inside your command line interface. Or you could just use uh, something that creates a text file. 
So WebStorm will create a text file. You could write it right in WebStorm and then just save it as a dot git ignore and WebStorm will save that. So I could create a new file. File new. And it could just be a file. Right? I don't have to specify, it could just be a file. And that file, I just do dot git ignore something more. But of course I'd name it correctly. And it's like, uh, what kind of file is this? Oh, it's a text file. Right, it's like, okay, go for it. That's what you named it. It's text file. Start typing. Right, so you could just create it right in WebStorm. And then, you know, make sure you create that first and then initialize your repo. And, uh, and I show you how to back that out if you did it the other way around in a video. Good question. Any other questions? So, uh, if you have some questions while you're working and I'm up here talking, Rio's in here, your neighbors are here, right? But, uh, so, uh, live preview, we looked at that, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, tags and attributes. Uh, so here's, yes, yeah, so all this code is uh, also up here on GitHub, so you could go get it if you want to follow along. GitHub goes to 11, uh, HTML and CSS. And uh, I'll just make sure that's current. So I have like, I don't know, terminal. And change directories into my documents. And then once I'm inside my documents, is that better? Yeah, and uh, you could just copy the settings from mine and paste it into yours, but that'll have it ignore uh, the file changes that WebStorm makes to an IDEA folder. You don't want to track that. So, the, like I said, the video that's in the playlist goes into that in depth to get ignore. So I'm in Documents, and I could ls-la list list all to see what's in that folder, and. Uh, Expand this over, it's made it big, now I'm making it small until it fits. There we go. And so I have in here, you know, all these different folders, and one was my HTML CSS. I no longer need HTML CSS copy, so I'm going to remove that recursively with force HTML CSS copy. HTML CSS copy. What is it to, I think I have to do this. There we go. Escape. And so that folder will hopefully be the only one I remove now. And now I could uh, redo my uh, LSLA. And I only have a HTML CSS there. So I'm going to go into that folder. And now I'm in that folder. I could do print working directory to see what's in there. And I could do a get status. And it's up to date, and I could do a git pull, just make sure there's nothing different out there on my repo. So I'm on branch master locally. You can see that right here. I'm on branch master. And then up here at GitHub, I have origin master. And origin, as we were talking about last week, is like the origin, the source from which everybody else is pulling their code. So that's the origin up on GitHub. And I'm on one computer and I pull my code, but if I was working with many people, we'd all be pulling from the origin. That's why we call it the master branch. The master branch on origin. Whoa, that's cool. And then here's the master branch on my computer. But the origin's where everybody's committing to and pushing code to and pulling code down from. So that's why it's origin forward slash master. So I'm all up to date. So that code up here is uh, all up to date. All right, so we were looking at uh, HTML comments. Typically, you name your folder, so I talk about this. I talk about all this stuff in the videos in, in very exhaustive depth. <laughs> but, 
you know, uh, you name your folders underscore characters, or sorry, lowercase, lowercase characters in your files. Keep it all lowercase. So the naming convention for files and folders, lowercase. And if you need to separate words, use dashes and spaces, dashes and underscores. Don't use spaces. Okay? So you can see here I have a lot of dashes and underscores, but no spaces. And so you, spaces are spaces are anathema on anath, anathema on the web, meaning no good. When I did it, it would not let me go to the next page because it kept saying that, oops, you made a mistake. You kept putting in. Uh, yeah, I think you emailed me about that. Did you email me about that? Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I did, no, I did that. I, I, did, I did exactly how it looks up there. And I, I did the, um, I, I, I emailed you because I can't get this on my laptop. But then I did it on another computer at the house. I tried on that one. And I finally got it open to the Code Academy. And when I did it, the closing tag and the right. opening okay. tag. Okay. Did you email me about that? No, that just happened this morning. Okay, so you haven't emailed me. Not about that. Okay. I can't get this up there. All right. I'll help you with that. And uh, if anybody else wants to step back and maybe give her a hand while we're sort of chatting through these files, anybody want to step over and see if you can troubleshoot it with her? Cool. Uh, so to get the comments in WebStorm, command forward slash, we'll do comments, command forward slash, shortcut key in WebStorm. And you have uh, under help your key map reference, so you can look up different shortcut keys for WebStorm. And, um, and then command delete, we'll just delete a line, so it deletes a line. And if I'm in CSS, like if I had a CSS file here, And I did command forward slash. It gives me a gives me the comment syntax for CSS. So command forward slash is put in a comment in WebStorm. No matter what file I'm in, WebStorm's smart enough to know what kind of syntax to use for what kind of comment. What kind of file you're in. So then we looked at a heading, uh, heading one, heading tags, and paragraph tags. So building HTML documents, first and foremost, you start thinking about your structure. And we have different tags. And the reason we have different tags, and again, the word elements or tags could be used interchangeably. So here, this is the H1 element, and then I put it in brackets, and it becomes a tag. So I got an opening tag and a closing tag. It's heading one, right? And so we use different tags to, uh, you know, mark up our text. Hi. Cool. Welcome. That's your seat. Yeah, you have more? Yeah, they canceled my class last week and I couldn't get on the other class. All right. Cool. Glad you're here. No problem. So these are uh, the different tags for headings. And so we just learn about, you know, what are the different tags we can use. And tags aren't for formatting, they're for creating the structure of our document. So here are heading tags and paragraph tags. Now, we're going to learn about Emmet in a second, so I'll save that. And then here's an unordered list. So you can see we're starting to build a document. 
Can you picture this document when you look at the code? So that's a good challenge, right? And so that's a good way is just start to look at code and try to picture what it's going to show you. So you can see browsers will automatically format some of the text by different tags. And here we have an anchor tag. An anchor tag has uh, some attributes. What are the attributes of this tag? href and target. Now what are these called? What is the technical definition for this and for this and for this? What's the technical word for that? So we have an anchor element and then there's an opening anchor tag and a closing anchor tag just to be precise with our terminology and then we have an attribute. What is an attribute set to? Is it a value or a property? A value? Attribute value? Is there anywhere we can look to sort of like see what other people say? I might go look at Shea Howe's course and right at the beginning building your first web page he has he has an image here. So that's, uh, that's for CSS. And then here is getting no HTML. Does he have an image of it? So I'm just going to search for attribute. And there's more about attributes down here. Was there an image? Yeah, I was just looking for an image, but I thought it was here. Look at the previous page and search for attribute. Elements tags. Attributes are properties used to provide additional information. ID attribute. Source. Name and a value. Include a name and a value. So, uh, oh, here we go. That's the image I was looking for. Except it just says attribute. It doesn't say uh, name value. So I think name value is fine. That's all sort of known as the attribute. But that's the kind of thing like, oh, let me look into this a little bit more. Make sure we're using the right words on things that interest me. So here's our attribute, name value. We might also, where else would we look to sort of research that a little bit more if there's a correct way to say that? W3 so W3 schools. How many people say W3 schools is a good source? How many people say no? Yeah. Why do you say no? The guy who's been developing 20 years who's in our class says W3 school is no good. Why? I have never once been able to go on there and get any so W3, W3C, the World Wide Web Consortium, okay, is a sort of a standards organization for helping develop the World Wide Web. And I think it's a nonprofit, it's a dot org, right? And they help develop the web, right? People working together to make the web what it is and the language we use and everything like that. Some other guys bought the domain W3 Schools. And, uh, and they have nothing to do with the W3. They bought the domain so that uh, they could capitalize upon 
the brand equity of W3C. So there, this is not an official website, W3 Schools of the W3, but a lot of people think it is. And the W3 Schools has some good stuff, but sometimes there's misinformation. Right? They get some things wrong. So the place you want to look for documentation is either W3C, and this gets, you could go into the documentation here, you know, and uh, W3 web documentation. W3 schools, W3. Yeah, so there's the W3 and then there's MDN. And MDN is also a really good source. So I think looking at MDN is my first go-to just because it's more consumable. Okay? So I might search MD3, MDN HTML attribute and see what they have. HTML attribute reference, Mozilla Developer Network. And uh, here are all the different attributes. There are additional values that configure the elements or adjust their behavior in various ways to meet the criteria the user wants. So they're talking about the whole attribute as a value. But these are all the attributes. So that's a good thing to learn is like where do you go for additional information? MDN is always what I prefix my searches with. So we saw an image tag. And then uh, this is how we link to a style sheet. And so here uh, it's linked to Google Fonts. And I'm using a little bit of styles. And this is just like a preview of CSS and styles. So we're jumping ahead of ourselves a little bit. But you can see right up here, it's got a slightly different style. The text. And so to use Google Fonts, Go to Google Fonts, and you just search in here for a font you want. And so I might search for, you know, just give me fonts that are handwriting. And then if I have a company name, I could change right up there. Instead of Grumpy Wizards Make Toxic Brew for Evil Queen and Jack. I have no idea where that reference came from. Does anybody? Like maybe if it said all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, I'd be like, oh, that's from Stephen King in The Shining. I know where that reference came from. I don't know where this reference came from. Is that Harry Potter? No. Oh. So if you have a company you're working for, you might you know, say, I want to see what the company name will look like in different fonts, right? Acme Co. or whatever. And then you can say, okay, I want to use this font right here. So you add it to your collection. And then down here, you have that added to your collection, and you say, okay, I want to use it now. So at the bottom right, use. And then you scroll down, and you get this link right here, and you put that right there into your head area. So you can see that's in my head area. It's right here. And then I include a little bit of a, some styles. So I do that. This is, a, I'm embedding these styles right into my, my web page. Right, so they're not linking to an external uh, web, uh, external style sheet, but they're embedded right into my uh, web page. So we call this internal. These styles are internal, embedding them internally, as opposed to linking to something externally, a different style sheet. These are styles that are embedded internally to the web page. And then, uh, so I, I put between style tags some CSS, and so here's a rule set. A rule set is made up of a selector and a declaration block. So the selector is what? The selector is H1. So I'm selecting all H1 tags or elements on my page. And I'm saying that there's this declaration block. A declaration block is made up of declarations. So I could have multiple declarations here. I could do color red and add another declaration in. So a rule set, a CSS rule set, is made up of a selector and a declaration block. In programming a block, 
a block of code, we're generally talking about something between curly braces. So a declaration block has declarations in it. There are two declarations there. Now there's only one. <laughs> a declaration is made up of a property and a value. There I have font family is the property and the value is first try shadows and delight and see if you could use that font. And if that doesn't work, then get a cursive font from the user system and use that. So I'm applying that CSS. Is the shadows into light, is that in single quotes because of spaces? So you could use single quotes or double quotes. So let's just, you know, and, you know, the proof is in the pudding. So uh, J.W. Audubon or whatever the dude's name is who founded the Audubon Society, one of my favorite go-to quotes, which comes up all the time in programming, is when the book and the bird differ, believe the bird. So when you're out looking at birds and you've got a book and you're, you know, that's what a sparrow should look like. But in reality, the sparrow is looking like something else. Believe the bird. So, you know, yeah, there's theory, but believe how the code runs. Run it and see. I say, oh, you can use single quotes or double quotes. Well, let's run it and see. And nothing changed. Uh -huh. And be aware of how WebStorm will highlight things when there's an issue or underline them. Like, whoa, okay, something's wrong with my code there. It's yellow. It's got a red underline. Oh, I need another little single quote there. So WebStorm is going to help you write your code. Also, when you're writing your code, what if I, I put my code up there and it was like, you know, no bueno, right? I could take my code and I could go to, so when you're going through, Code Academy, you could go to HTML Validator, and it'll take you to the W3C markup validation. And then I get here, I could validate by direct input and paste all my code in, and I could check it, and it'll say, you know what, you have a, an error because you opened up a div tag and you didn't close it. Sweet, now I know what I need to fix. So I could come back here and take that out. So uh, with what I've just given you, because I've been chatting and you've been listening and your brain buffer is getting full, so you need to take that out of the buffer and put it into longer storage memory. And the way you do that is you actually code it. So I want you to code this page with an image, some heading one, a bulleted list, a couple of paragraphs, and an anchor tag. I want you to code this page and bring in a Google font and apply that style. And I will leave both this image right there and this right here up on my screen. So you can kind of have a little bit of a look-see for that style stuff because that's kind of new. All right? So code that page up. If you're, you know, or work on whatever you're working on if you're already ahead of that. But I just gave you some good pieces of information. You need to be able to build this. Build it. And we should be able to do it in like 10, 15 minutes. And then we'll talk about some more stuff. Okay? What's up? These right here? Yeah. This is the, uh, the selector. So the selector allows us to select things on our, so HTML is your content, CSS is your formatting. So in CSS, we're going to say, uh, target this thing over on the HTML page and make it this way. Make it red, make it cursive, make it with this font, make it bold. And so in CSS, we have to say, okay, which thing over on the HTML page am I targeting? In my CSS, I'm saying target the H1 element. And so here's the H1 element. So all of this formatting here, this rule set, will be applied to this HTML. It'll make that HTML this font. If I also added in the declaration of color red, right, it's now also going to make this red. All right, so that's where I, I take in my CSS and I start pointing to things on the page. So the selector is saying select this thing, select that thing. All right. Build happily, raise your hand if you have questions. Coming.